And then they're going to have their share of competitors. And one team that we saw keep it very close with them last season were the Mount Pleasant Vikings. They ended up losing that game 14-16. to They were the team that kept it the closest with the Warriors before the Whipple Championship. And now transitioning over into the Mount Pleasant Vikings, they ended up going 4-4 four and four last season, 4-3 and three in season, 4-4 four and four if you count their playoff loss to North Catholic at the end of the year. Uh... What, you know, Mount Pleasant is a team that they were very up and down last year. They started out hot, you know, only lost to Greater Latrobe, um, and then ended up dropping that Elizabeth Ford game, dropping a game against South Park, barely skimming into the playoffs. You know, it was kind of a little bit of a controversy, them getting in over, you know, remember last team they could only take two wild cards, them getting in over the Avonworth Antelopes um, to make it as a wild card in 3A. Uh, they're going to be replacing the quarterback, but they got both of their leading rushers back in, so Franco and Aaron Alexson. Uh, what are your thoughts here from the Mount Pleasant Vikings? Do you think that you know they're they're closer to being a team that competes for the championship, or we might see a decline? Because I could go either way here with this team. Yeah, uh, only time will really tell with this team. It's they're they're a really hard team to preview and predict. Um, the one bright spot, like you mentioned, they got um, two of their leading rushers back. Um, as you mentioned, and Alexson and even Robbie uh, Labuda, don't forget, he had four touchdowns on 360 yards last year in the shortened season. Um, but, yeah, and then the bad thing is they lost their starting quarterback. But, uh, yeah, this 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 uh, Mount Pleasant team, their season could really go either way. Um, there's going to be some tough games in the middle that we'll talk about here in a sec. Um, that's really going to define their season. And then even though they're losing a, a little bit of offensive talent, especially, you know, behind center, uh, that defense who looked mm. very good last year, you're looking at some of their scores early in the season, you know, only giving up 10 to a South Moreland team that was, you know, fairly good offensively last season, you know, only allowing 14 against South Allegheny in the opener. Uh, obviously the Elizabeth forward game sticks out as well. Uh, is this going to be a team where, we're not seeing this with a lot of other teams in the conference that really leans on the defense, and that could give them an advantage uh, over other teams in the conference. Yeah, they definitely return a lot on the defensive side, a lot of seniors, a lot of juniors, and that's what wins football games. Um, and, and they got a favorable schedule off the bat. Uh, I don't see there, why there would be any reason that this team couldn't start 4-0 um, with at Burrow, at Derry, Greensburg at home. Uh, in Greater Latrobe, you know, I think this team could be 4-0 and by uh, September 24th uh, with a home game at South Moreland. Um, uh, Mount Pleasant could very well just be in the uh, swing of things, and uh, who knows if things go their way. I personally think they're better than South Moreland and York. Uh, we could talk about them being 7-0 and heading into Elizabeth forward uh, um, on October 15th. So um, their schedule really plays out interesting. Um, but it doesn't end um, easy for them as they they are going to face uh, the three top dogs that are right up there with them. Yeah, two of those games are going to be on the road against Elizabeth Forward and at South Allegheny. South Allegheny. I'm sorry. Uh, we're we're going to get into our rankings later, but this is definitely one of the more interesting teams that we'll talk about when we uh, rank the teams in, in this conference. 